Welcome everybody. In this video we're going to generate the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution using the Metropolis Monte Carlo simulation method. The basic idea is that we're going to model the states of the gas by considering different energies. So here I've shown uh, a state 1 and a state 2 which differ in their kinetic energy. And these changes are being caused by random thermal motion inside the, the gas. Now jumps in the downwards energy direction occur at a rate k, but upwards energy jumps have to increase the kinetic energy of the molecules, and this happens at a fraction less, which is the Boltzmann factor, which is an exponential function of this dimensionless energy, which is the kinetic energy of the molecule divided by Boltzmann's constant times temperature, which is the thermal energy. Now to do this we're going to have to step through and generate um, trial velocities and the way we're going to do that is for each component of our three-dimensional gas we're going to calculate the new value of the velocity from the old one by taking a random step of size minus s to plus s which is how this thing works. You'll maybe remember that from the previous video. Then what we're going to do is calculate the Boltzmann factor for the kinetic energy change, which is just minus of the kinetic energy divided by the thermal energy. We can then use the Metropolis algorithm to decide whether the change in kinetic energy will occur. For downwards jumps, it's always accepted, so those always occur. But if we're jumping uphill in energy, then those jumps have to occur with a fraction epsilon, and the way we're going to do that is by comparing a random number r with epsilon. And if the random number is less than or equal to epsilon, then we'll accept the jump. Otherwise, we'll stay at the same kinetic energy. Okay, so I'm going to start by um, showing you the spreadsheet that we generated at the end of the last video, where we generated the Boltzmann distribution for the isothermal atmosphere. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim off all the stuff that we don't need and redo all the headings to match our new um, simulation. And here it is, we have a parameters column which now has the step and velocity, which we're going to make 200 meters per second. We've got the mass of the nitrogen molecules in the gas, a Boltzmann's constant, and the temperature in kelvins. What I've also done is in the step column here, I'm just counting from 0 down to 10,000. And in step 0, I'm going to set up. I don't need anything for these first few things, but I do need an initial velocity for the molecule which I'm going to make 0, and then I need to calculate what that is by going it's equal to the square root of x squared, which I can do by just multiplying it by itself, plus y squared plus z squared, and then close paren. Oh, and I have an error. It should be square root, so sqrt. There we go. And then finally what I need to do here is calculate the kinetic energy and that of course we can use our familiar formula from physics 1 which is equals 1 half times m which is way over here hit f4 to get it all, all the time times v squared so times v times v. Okay, so now let's do our first step in the Metropolis algorithm. So what we need to do is we're going to make the new trial velocity equal to the old one plus the step size, and we have to hit F4, times our random thing, which is going to be 2 times rand minus 1, close paren, close paren, and so that gives us a random number, and we want to do the same thing for y and z. So we get three different random values of the, the trial velocity components. So we need to calculate the kinetic energy, which is of course is equal to 1 half times m, hit f4, times all of the velocity components squared, so vx times vx plus vy squared plus vz squared, close parens. Okay, then we need the random number, which is just equal to rand, 
and we're going to use the same random number for all three components so they're all being decided the same way and epsilon here is our Boltzmann factor which is just equal to um, the exponential function times minus and then open parens the new kinetic energy minus the old kinetic energy and then that divided by the quantity KB oh, KB hit F4 times T hit F4 to get an absolute address close paren close paren so that's our Boltzmann factor and then here what we need to do is use our uh, uh, metropolis criteria to decide whether we're going to accept the move so our new value of Vx is going to be equal to and then a conditional if and the conditional is if r is less than or equal to epsilon then we accept the move and use the new v otherwise we use the old v close paren and I need to do a similar thing for y so I'll do that again equals if and it's r is less than or equal to epsilon if it's true then we accept the old the new value of y otherwise we take the old value of vy and then our last one is that equals if and again it's r is less than or equal to epsilon comma take the new value otherwise take the old value all right and these last two formulas should still work so let's just copy those down there we go okay so now we've actually filled in our first step all the other steps are going to be exactly the same so if I left click drag across the whole row and then get my open cross change it to a close cross and double click I can fill in the whole simulation and if we've done everything correctly it should be working all right so let's now see if we can generate our histogram so here's our histogram table we have our bin which is 25 meters per second the thing that we're actually going to be um, finding bins of which is going to be the the speed um, in meters per second then we've got the frequency and then the probability density function which is a probability density function of v the first row has just zeros in it um, the probability density function just to let you know is being calculated from the frequency we're dividing by 10,000 because we've got 10,000 values of V and we're dividing by the bin size to give us a properly normalized probability density function okay so this one's pretty easy it's just the previous value and the hardest thing here is the frequency doing the count so this is based on um, the previous video and the one before that um, let's just quickly go over what we've got let's count ifs the range that we're looking at goes from uh, step 1 for V all the way down to step 10,000 we're saying if the value is greater than or equal to the green box uh, then count it but it also has to be less than the one in purple which is the one underneath okay Oop, so we're going to need that so let's say what that is that's going to be equal to the one above plus 25 and that has to be f4 and our frequency for this guy is going to be equal to the one above and our value for the probability density will be the same okay so I can now copy down all of these and go as far as I need I think I'm going to go out to about 1500 meters per second okay so let's see how we're doing we've got our speed and we want to plot it against probability density we need to insert and we're going to insert a scatter with lines there it goes and we want to format this so I'm going to use my uh, what am I going to do? I'm going to use change chart type and use my template and the one I have is markers only which isn't quite what we want so I'm going to go back and change it to be lines okay so now we have our probability density function what I want to do now is just tidy up the axes and give it a proper label molecular speed in meters per second 
and then I need to change the vertical axis to say what that is probability density and you'll notice that the units are actually seconds per meter so that this thing multiplied by that thing gives you something without units and then we need a decent title for the chart okay so now that we've got that entered correctly let's just hit delete a little bit and see what we get so we'll see that we've got a graph here that changes but it's giving us a shape here that looks like it might be right so now let's enter the theoretical formula into another part of the spreadsheet and plot that too okay so I've added the theoretical formula for the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution and it's shown as the red dotted line and now when I hit delete you'll see that our Metropolis Monte Carlo method really is generating data that are consistent with the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution so if you understand the methodology behind the Metropolis algorithm and the way it generated those um, data then you should really understand the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution there is kind of a tricky thing about why is the shape like this where the probability of zero speed is actually zero and then gets bigger and then gets smaller um, but we'll leave that for another video so let's just check to see if we followed our plan so as you just noticed we successfully generated the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution using the Metropolis method so when I finish editing this video I'll put it together on the website for this project circle4.com biophysics and you can look for the link near the top of the page